Welcome to Meet the Artist. This program is brought to you by Hedberg Public Library and JATV Media Services. I'm your host, Teresa Wynn. Meet the Artist features various local artists whose work will be on display in monthly exhibits at Hedberg Public Library. And in the studio today, we have the very talented Pat Sparling, our featured artist for the month of March. Hey, Pat. Welcome to the studio. Well, thank you. It was nice seeing you again. Yes, you too, likewise. And I'm so excited you're here. You're a well-known photographer. And let's talk about your experiences, your growing up and growing into a photographer. Early on, when you were young, who kind of encouraged you with this? Like, how did you stumble upon a camera? That would be my mother. Um, she worked for Life Magazine back in the 50s. And before I could read, all, all we had in the house was books and magazines not from Life Magazine. So I, 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 was, I, was, I was drawn to photography because, again, the, the pictures were there and that was the next best thing. And she bought me uh, my first camera. It was a plastic camera. Uh. And I used to use also her uh, little Instamatic cameras. How old were you? Oh, I had to be about five or six. Oh, no kidding. Yes, when I was reading, my mom has a great picture of me holding, um, it was uh, a Life magazine, or a Life book about uh, uh, World War II. And mm. I, there's a beautiful picture, I fell asleep, and the book is on top of me. Aww. Um, but then she, um, she encouraged me. Uh, she's, she, did, she wanted me to be a photographer, um, I think, because uh, I, I enjoyed it so much. I enjoyed seeing the pictures, and I could communicate through the pictures. Sure. So you, you kept using that camera and just going out and taking photos around the neighborhood? Or? Yeah. When I was 14, she bought me a Nikon F, which oh. I still have today. Yeah. And then uh, years later, she bought me another a beautiful Nikon uh, that I, I, again, I still have it today and I still use it. It's, even if it's a film camera and I still use it. That's awesome. Do you remember an early photo, some picture that you took that you looked at and thought, wow, this is it's pretty good? It was a stick. It was in the water and it was a beautiful blue sky with fluffy clouds. And um, the reflection in the water, I just, I loved it. And it was at a, a friend of the family's uh, pond and they, they loved it too. Uh -huh. and, uh, and they encouraged me also, our, our family friends encouraged me also to be, you know, and enjoy sure. what I'm doing. And then when you were in school, like high school, um, was there a photography class that you could take or anything like that? Never took any classes. Mm. Not even post high, post high school? Years later when I was shooting, I was shooting commercial photography, um, I grew up in Chicago and I worked downtown in Chicago in the Loop and I took classes at the Art Institute in Chicago and at Columbia College. Oh, okay. And photography? Photography classes. Oh, okay. And uh, I, I'd already learned how to be a photographer, but it, was, it just happened to um, fall into what I wanted to do. Sure. And Chicago, what a great place to capture I, images. I, I learned street photography, All which right. is, um, I shot commercial work, advertising, Mm -hmm. But my, my, my love was street photography. Wow. And it still is today. I, I, uh, I enjoy doing that in Janesville. Right. We've, we've um, seen some of those. I, uh, I try to uh, combine street photography and architectural um, right. studies in the same. Right. You're drawn to buildings, especially historic structures. That, yes. And, and I love graffiti. Um, you know, because it, granted there's not as much as there used to be, but, um, you know, it just shows that gritty side of the city. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. And is there a photographer in particular, um, they could be local or someone famous that you have looked up to? Or? There's three of them. All right. Um, I was in charge of photography at Lab Safety, and I was afforded the luxury to go out to a seminar out in Wyoming. Um, at, it was called Photography at the Summit. And Lab Safety sent me out there for seven years straight. And you were taught by National Geographic photographers 
and life photographers. So I met, first I met Bill Epridge. He was the photographer of the famous Bobby Kennedy assassination uh, photo. And he and I became very close because he remembered my mom from when he worked at Life Magazine when All she right. did. Um, and he influenced me a lot on a set of images that I took um, a long time ago in Chicago. And then two uh, husband and wife photographer duo, um, Dick Durance and Sue Drinker. Dick Durance was a war correspondent in uh, Vietnam. And then he went to work for National Geographic and he was the uh, photographer of the year one year. And his wife is an incredible landscape photographer. Oh. And I still keep in touch with them today uh, through Facebook. Dynamic duo. Oh, incredible, incredible. They, they taught me how to see in a different way. Mm. Mm. That's really cool. And that's what it is too. It's an, it's an eye for the unusual. Exactly, it's, it's, it's irony. You know, you see th certain things and um, it's just, you have to look at things a little different than you, uh, you know, just it's not right there. It's not taking snapshots. It's actually creating an, something that's already there and, and uh, looking at it differently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell me about your editing process. And, and I know today it's a whole lot different than in the past. And, and talk a little bit about that change for you. I don't like it. <laughs> Um, I don't use Photoshop other than, nowadays with digital photography, you have to run it through Photoshop to bring it in, um, into the computer. Um, basically what I do is I, um, I check the color and, um, you know, obviously the sharpness of the image. Um, but I, I don't like using Photoshop to create an image. Um, I think the younger photographers are using that as a, as a crutch, or not as a crutch, but as a new tool. Um, AI photography, you know, it's, it's, it's taken the art out of photography. Mm. I worked in um, commercial studios where you would have to create the image, and nowadays you, the Photoshop is the creator and not the photographer. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting perspective. If you look at um, a lot of the images um, today, um, there's so much Photoshop work done to it mm -hmm. that you can't recognize it from an artist um, painting mm -hmm. to a f photograph. Yeah, there there is a lot you can do with with editing for sure. Yeah. Almost too much. Yeah, yeah, okay. And as far as these pieces you brought in today, let's talk about those. So you have some interesting works here. I really like this because of the pop of color. I, that one was shot on in downtown Janesville on the, it would be the um, west, northwest side of Janesville. It's uh, Accudine, I think it is. Okay. And it's uh, an old building that's, it has the graffiti on it. Mm -hmm. So I, I shot that. it early one morning and it must have just got painted because um, it got painted over the there was more graffiti there and it got painted over by somebody mm -hmm. and then somebody put fresh I, I must have got it the, within the next two days after they did it oh wow so it was a lot more colorful it's all faded now or at, at least the last time I saw it mm -hmm. and again that's it's it's common uh, combining the architectural with the um, the street photography Right, and there's, there's kind of a juxtaposition of old and new here. Exactly. Because I, I love the arched window and the, the bricks. And they, they had painted the windows silver to keep people from looking in, uh -huh. the, the company did. Uh -huh. And all the windows down there. Um, and there's a series of photographs that I've taken with this series um, where some of the windows are broken out and there's, they, they look totally different. So you can mm -hmm. go down the whole street and look at them and they're all sure. different. Sure, sure. And then you got the new with the, the graffiti. And then over here, you have this, these orange bricks popping out. That's again in the back alleys of Janesville. That's downtown um, on the back side of Milwaukee Street. And it's just peeling paint. You know, it, it was painted one color and, this, sure. you know, and it got painted over and that peeled and the orange was left over. And again, it's, you know, using the composition of the, you know, the, 
the roof line and then it has the chimney on it. So it, it created a nice look to it. It does. And it's something that, you know, we might just in passing be like, oh, whatever. It's my looking it's up a, series. It's a pattern. Okay, tell me about the looking up. Um, everybody looks straight ahead. You know, they, they don't look down, they don't look up, they look straight ahead. Mm -hmm. They might look side to side, but they don't look up or down. And as, a, and as a photographer, I always am looking left, right, behind me. Um, and that is, again, is from my friends Dick Durance and Sue Drinker. They mm. told me to look around, look up and down, look everywhere. Right. Because it's there. <clears throat> right. But You've captured things like gargoyles on buildings and I was just really showing somebody that today. The gargoyles over on Marshall Middle School. At Marshall. Yeah. Uh, no, people don't look up enough or they don't look down. Right. And, and your most interesting place or location for a photo, where would you say that might be might have been? I love the back alleys at Janesville. Mm. You know, the back back of buildings and stuff because it's not used. It's not what people see every day. Mm -hmm. You know, you go in the back alleys. I used to come down here at 5 o'clock in the morning downtown, and uh, the police would see me down there. They, was, they grew <laughs> suspicious of me. And, uh, There's that guy in the alleys again. Yeah, then they, then they came up and met me, and then they'd, they'd say hi, you know, and they'd just mm -hmm. let, them, let me do what I wanted. But going they to the see back, you with your camera then. Exactly. I found so many interesting uh, images in the alleys um, that most people don't see. Sure, sure. Again, it's that looking around, right? Mm -hmm. Very cool. And over here, you have uh, an aerial view. How did you get that shot? That is my brother's house in Chicago. My brother, Johnny, his uh, house in Chicago. It's on Lakeshore Drive, uh, looking over Lakeshore Drive from uh, the beginning of Lakeshore Drive. Really? It's at, at what's called Hollywood and Sheridan. That's the beginning of Lakeshore Drive. And the only, I call, and I don't name my photos. Um, I have a really hard time expressing my, um, my artist speak. Mm -hmm. um, but that one I call the only man. Um, this is a spot in Chicago where um, it's the end of Lakeshore Drive, so there's stoplights, and people have to stop there. So the homeless people will sit there and they'll collect money from people. So this gentleman will walk all the way up and down Lakeshore Drive, up to Lakeshore Drive, and try to collect money. And then mm -hmm. they walk back after the cars have left, and mm -hmm. the turn signals are right, or the turn signals are right there, but in there, they have the uh, the road sign saying "Only this way." Mm -hmm. I like the title. Only man, and that's again. I don't use. I don't name my photos. It's really hard for me yeah. to do that. Yeah. Well, words are a different kind of uh, thing mm -hmm. than color and and photography. I like that it's black and white too. I love black and white because. Um, I look at the old, I don't want to call them old masters photography. You know, they didn't sure. have a lot of color back in the day. They didn't use it. It was expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I get, I guess I'm, I go back to that book. It's uh, the, the picture, the picture history of World War II from life. And it was all black and white photos by incredible uh, mm -hmm. photographers. Mm -hmm. All, you know, and that inspired me. And I, 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 I look at things and uh, I guess it goes in the back of your mind of what, that's where you get inspired, you know, it still sure. stays with you. Sure. Do you ever like to photograph food? I, I funny you should ask, I, <laughs> I did commercial work for years and years okay. and we'd shoot food all the time. Um, What's a favorite? I love chocolate. I love cho well, well, do you love chocolate or do you love to I photograph chocolate? I love both because <laughs> when, you, when you photograph food, um, uh, we shot for Keebler. So we'd bring in uh, pallets full of cookies. And, oh, gosh. Yeah. And, yeah, that's, that's the thing. But then they bring chocolate in. So I got to sample the chocolate, not only photographing it, but you get to sample that's it. That's a too. nice tip. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> I'd say. So if you were to give some advice to... A younger generation out there of aspiring photographers um, wanting to explore to try it what would you say to them buy a film camera mm. learn how to shoot with film because digital is it covers your mistakes you can shoot 50 images within a few seconds mm -hmm. but a film photographer when you shoot film you only can shoot one or two images because it's costly 
Mm -hmm. um, you study it more. You study what you're shooting more. Um, I can take my camera and I can I can shoot 40 images in a minute. You know, I can just turn around. But are they all good? No. Um, but if you're shooting film, and I'm not saying they're all good, but um, if you're shooting film, you you think about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have uh, you value it more exactly because there is a price tag on it. Not only a price tag, but you're you're um, when you work in a in a commercial studio, you only are you only shoot three or four images, and they, that's because of what's called bracketing. Um, you have light, dark, and the and the middle. Mm -hmm. um, when you're shooting, um, if you're shooting sports, let's say you know. Yeah, you can shoot a hundred images in a couple minutes. You know that's worth it. But if you're shooting a um, a sunset, do you think about what you're doing? You have you have it in your mind what it's supposed to look like. Sure. And you shoot it. And you have this much time to get it right. Exactly. <laughs> um, but it, with digital nowadays, you can shoot. You can have the camera go off for five minutes if you want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And people. Um, I think the biggest thing that I see with younger photographers is they don't edit. When they when they look at some, they'll put out ten pictures in their thing, in, on let's say uh, social media, they'll put out ten pictures, and you're supposed to go through them. Where there's only one that you know that's the one you like. I learned the lesson when I went to these seminars that um, I was sitting down with life, you know, Pulitzer Prize winning photographers, you know. Um, and you'd, you'd have like 20 images and they'd, they'd whip through the images like this and they'd just pick out one. Uh -huh. Because that's how, that's how it works in uh, magazine photography. Professional photography. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Tell me about your past exhibits, Pat. Well, um, I have been, um, I showed, I was uh, showing some things down at uh, Raven's Wish and I, I do have things down at Raven's Wish now, but I, was one of their artists of the month. Um, I've been um, a really, really good friend of mine, uh, Tess. Um, she did Tales of the Farm, and I, <laughs> yeah. I, I got to uh, display down at JPEG. Tales of our farms. That's right. We featured area photographers, and yes. you were one that was chosen to bring out your farm uh, agriculture photography. By the way, is phenomenal. So keep Thank that you. up as well. Right. And now you're at Hedberg. I'm at Hedberg now and for the month of March. And, and was it difficult to choose uh, what you'd like to put up there? Because you probably have hundreds of noodles, I, thousands. I, yeah, I do. And um, I guess it's what I have framed. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's framed. <laughs> but I do have something that um, I'm, I'll be displaying at Raven's Wish that's going to be kind of exciting. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Years ago, I was gifted um, 120 glass negatives from the 1893 World's Fair. Mm. So I'm dropping them by Friday at Raven's Wish. I'm going to have them exhibited down there at Raven's Wish. Oh, wow. And these are black and white images from the World's Fair. Um, it's really difficult to say how I got the negatives, but I do have the original negatives from that, um, or copies of the original negatives. That and is I've amazing. I've had these for probably close to thirty years or or more. Super cool. And I finally got enough time to put them together because the negatives were damaged and putting them back sure. together. Sure, that's some work. It is, and that's again that's Photoshop work, which I don't like to do. But in that case, for restoration work, you have to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're excited to see more of your photography at Hedberg. Are you excited? I am. Great. I got um, a tour of it today from Megan, and uh, I am excited to see what how it looks all hung up. and. That's awesome. Thank you, Pat Sparling, for coming into the studio today and allowing our viewers to get a sneak peek of your work and to get to know the man behind the photography. So we invite the public to come visit the library this month to check out Pat Sparling's display. And if you'd like to learn more about Pat Sparling's photography, you can find his information displayed on your screen. Thank you all for joining me today. Please check out this program on JATV Media Services, Charter Cable, Channel 994. You can also find it on JATV's YouTube channel. 
Remember, don't wait for another day. Go out and make some wild, whimsical, wonderful art. I'm your host, Teresa Wynn. I'll see you next time on Meet the Artist.